Hello, this is Dr. Greg Goglin, Fair State University. Today we're going to go through how to create a hash set in NCASE and also how to do a hash set analysis. And what that will involve is creating a hash set for each of two images and then running a hash set analysis to find out what files are on both images. So let's get started. We'll create a new case. And just a basic case, we'll call it the time I'm making this. And we'll call it uh, man wash hash because I'm going to use the man tooth, the washer files, uh, image files uh, for this hash. So I will put that in also in the base folder and then I will use that base folder also for the primary evidence cache to make sure it's in the same place that I'm expecting and then I will put this on the D drive the uh, backup location you want on a separate file or a separate drive from your uh, case so that if something goes wrong with your uh, primary you still have a backup in a, in a safe location. We'll let it rip. Creating some directories and we're off and running. We're, first thing we have to do is add some evidence so let's go out and get a couple of evidence files. The first one we'll get is the washer evidence file and we'll add that then I'm also going to add the Mantooth evidence file. So I now have two evidence files added to my case. And we can see the top one is washer. So let's go into washer. And Green home plate is how we see all of the files. And if we go through and scroll off to the side, we can see the MD5s are not filled in for those files. Now, when you take an image with something like FTK Imager or NCASE Imager, you get an MD5 and a SHA-1 for the entire image, but not the individual files within those images, unless you uh, configure some things, a special way to do that. Uh, what we need to do is we've got to hash all of these files. And anytime you want to do something in NCASE, you got to check it. So the blue check. Now, pointing out, if you look in the middle, you can see this selected area. This is called a Dixon box. Dixon was a guy that kept bugging the, the engineers at Guiding Software and said, hey, I want to know how many things are checked because you go screen to screen and you can, can't always remember what's been checked. So if you were to just do part of it, like let's say we take off a few of these, you can see this number change. Uh, so we know we have all of them because it's 384 out of 384. So now we're going to do something. They're checked. We go to entries and we're going to hash them. And the two that need to be checked are the MD5 and the SHA-1. We're not going to do the hash analysis yet. It's not going to give us a performance penalty, so we'll just leave it checked. Uh, the verify file signatures we don't need checked, but we'll do it anyway. What that does is it makes sure that the internal hex signature matches the file extension. So if it's a JPEG uh, file, both the .jpg and the internal uh, signature matches. If not, you'll get a flag. So let's let that run. Down in the lower right, you can see it ran quite quickly. Refresh is now enabled. We'll click on that. We have to do the green home plate again to see everything. So we green home plate it and we see our MD5 and SHA-1 is now filled in. So we are done with this one in terms of hashing internally. Now we've got to go to the Mantooth file and do the same thing. So we select it, entries, hash them. 
let it run down the little ray. You'll see it run pretty fast. Do a refresh. Green home plate it. Scroll over. Not that far. And you can see the SHA-1 and MD5s are filled in. So we have now hashed the files within there. Notice that some of these are empty. What it is, uh, the files hash, but like look at the first three. Things like uh, directories don't hash, so it's only the files. So we can go back. Uh, actually, what we have to do is create our hash library. So we'll go to Tools, Manage the Hash Library, and we have to create one. So we do a new, and I created this directory. It's just an empty directory sitting out on my, on my C drive, and I just put underscores in front of it so that it's at the top for the sort. So it's 2020 Hashman Wash. So I select that, and it partially created the hash library. There's nothing in it. We can add a new hash set with that or a right click, new hash set, and let's name them. So we have to do Mantooth. And I, I'll just put hash on it just for name. Uh, and then man hash cat. How about that? And just so we have something filled in, man hash tag. Click OK. And now that is created. It's essentially a shell. The count is zero. There's nothing in it yet. Let's create the other one for washer. So I'll just change the man to wash. And the tag. We're done with that. Got both of them. There's zero count. We've created our hash library. This is where it's located. These are the two shells we have to, to put some, some data into. So we currently, if we don't remember which one we're on, we can always go back and look, the Mantooth. So if we go into Mantooth, go back where we were, double click it. They're all selected. So we've got 1921 out of 20. That's just because the entry isn't isn't selected either. There, now we've got it. That isn't going to hash anyway, because there isn't a hash. Going to Entries. Now we want to add this to the hash library. And we're not in the primary. We created one in the other area. Let's go out and grab it. This is what it was. We're doing Mantooth. Select Mantooth. These are the fields that are automatically put into our hash set. We can grab some other ones if we want. We'll grab a few for good measure. Click OK. And those are in there. So that's Mantooth. Now let's go back through and let's get Washer. Double click it. Get them all selected. So we've got 3884 selected. Entries. Add to hash library. Again, we've got to go to the right one. Defaults, let's add those other four that we did with Mantooth. We've got them. Now you can see the, seven, the 1172 is there. We gotta put it in the right spot. I didn't blue check washer. Click OK. Notice that the 1172 though, that was from the previous time when we added the the, the man tooth washer's empty. But now if we go back in and look, we can see they're in there. 2888 hashes we just added to the washer hash set. Okay, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. Um, 
Green Home played it. If you go back over, you can see the MD5s. If you go a little farther, and you can drag these, these around. Oh, I dragged it previously. It's all the way over here. The hash set names. Uh, the hash set names is empty. And you're like, well, why just created a hash set? Why aren't they on there? Well, you've got to run the hash set analysis. So if you remember here, hash um, sig selected, this is what you need to run. But there's a little bit of a trick, which can be very, very frustrating. So we do the MD5 and SHA-1. So we don't need to have checked. We just need to have this one checked. But let's let it run. And you go down to the lower right, and it ran really fast. And you're like, I oh, don't see it. Do a refresh. Green Home played it again. And they're still not there. Of course, we're looking at directories. Let's go a little farther down. We're looking at files, but they're not there. Here's the catch. Go back to the original home. Do the hash library, and you have to change the hash library to um, the one we just created, which is in this this directory. That's it. Now we've got them; they're enabled. And now, if we go back to our evidence, and now if we do our hash analysis. We should have a little better luck. So we got it run, and if you look down to the lower right, you can see, yeah, okay, it's chugging away a little bit. Now I'm using these images because they're so so small, you know, just a few thousand files each. Um, so this only takes about 10 seconds or 15 seconds to run. Uh, so we're not having to do a lot of editing, and you don't have to wait a long time. It has finished. You still don't see them, but if you do a refresh. And then you green home plate it again. Remember, directories don't have hashes. There you see the washer hashes. Okay. And if you get all the way up to the top, you can see the both the washer and the man tooth hashes. So you can double click on these columns, and that's how they sort. That's why you see that arrow. Because um, I double click to make it sort washer man tooth together. And you're like, well, how many of them are the same? Well, you see they start at number one. So just scroll down a ways until you only see the washer. And you can see it stops at 93. OK, so that tells you that there are 93 files that are on washer and also on Mantooth. And this is the washer image. Let's go back and let's go through the Mantooth image. Double click it and with green home plate so we can see everything. You see these hash set names? They're not filled in. And the reason they're not filled in is we haven't done the analysis. So they're all checked. You get the blue check. Uh, do the hash signature analysis. Hash analysis is selected. Click OK. Down the lower right you can see it's running. Okay, it's not going to take too long because this image only has 1,922 files. And so it's just comparing against that, but it's using both hash sets. So it's kind of doing like a double pass. It has finished. Let's do the refresh. Let's get the green home plate. Scroll it up to the top. And here we have our common files. So we scroll down a ways. And we can see there's 118 files that are on both. The rest of them are just on Mantooth. So Mantooth and Washer have different numbers of files in common between the two images. OK, but there's 118 files that are on the Mantooth image that are also on the Washer image. So that's how you do a hash set analysis, create hash sets and so forth. Hope this was useful for you.